Hello and welcome to another episode on the Stretch Street Podcast. This is the Energetic EJ and it's another exciting week to be here again. I hope that so far so good your week has been great and you're looking forward to an amazing weekend because I am and I hope you are too. Okay, so today on the show I have a guest all the way from Nigeria. My guest today is in the health sector. Now, his story is fascinating to me because when he reached out, like, you know, he would love to be on the podcast. I was like, okay, give me a summary of your stretch story. And it so happened that his story was quite interesting. And I'm like, okay, I love this one. Let us take a deeper dive into your story because his was more like they gave birth to a solution, like literally gave birth to a solution. All right. And we're going to find out what was that like? What are the challenges that they faced since the discovery of this solution that they gave birth to, right? Um, yeah, so we're going to explore the challenges and then most importantly, the life lessons that they have gotten from this experience, all right? Today on the show, my guest is Mr. Ife Dayo. Oshuntui, also known as Ife the Baker. He is a graduate of the School of Pharmacy from Olabisi Onobanjo University, Ogun State, with over 15 years of clinical and retail experience in the hospital setting. His wealth of knowledge and expertise has earned him a position on the management team as the head of pharmacy at Reddington Lekki Hospital. Driven by his passion for optimal nutrition and his childhood experience with food allergies, particularly wheat and dairy-containing foods, Mr. Oshunsui started developing products using alternatives to wheat-based flour. His quest led to the discovery of highly rich in fiber grains that are locally sourced, including acha, sorghum, rice, gluten-free oats, and tapioca flour for baking confectioneries. He is the founder of Ife the Baker Confessionary, which produces baked goods that meet international standards for special dietary needs. Through his platform, Mr. Shuntuyi trains, educates, and raises awareness about food allergies, providing safer and healthier options for children and adults with special preferences and needs. As a conference speaker, Mr. Shuntuyi shares his expertise in human nutrition, medicine's role, in health and achieving optimal health through a healthy diet. He has attended several courses on entrepreneurship, business leadership, and emotional intelligence. Apart from his professional engagement, Mr. Oshutui volunteers in youth development at his church and enjoys nature. He is married to Adi Dolapo, a social entrepreneur and child advocate, and they are blessed with two beautiful children. All right. So today let us dive into Mr. Ifed Baker's story. Now, you know how we do it here. We're going to meet him the stretch street way before we go into exploring his stretch story. So sit back, relax, grab your cup of tea, your cup of coffee, or your bottle of water, and let us explore the story together. Also, if this is your first time watching or listening to this podcast, please remember to subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. And if you're listening on any of the listening platforms that you listen on, please do favorite us there um, on that platform. And again, feel free to share this particular episode with somebody you know. Now, let us get to meet him the stretch street way. You're listening to Stretch Street Podcast. Stretch Street Podcast. Stretch Street with the Energetic EJ. With the Energetic EJ. With the Energetic EJ. Don't stop listening. <laughs> Hi and welcome to Stretch Streets. Ooh. Hello, Mr. Ifred Dayo. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Energetic EG. Nice <laughs> to be on your podcast today. It's a pleasure yes. and yes. an honor. Fantastic. Um, I'm happy to have you here as well. Okay, so this is how we 
introduce ourselves on the Stretch Street podcast. I'm going to ask you four questions, actually three, because we already know about you. We know um, your name already. So, but we want you to tell us in your own words, not in the way that we've captured it in your profile. What do you do? That question has caught me off guard. So I really, I don't know how to frame it, honestly. <laughs> the reason why I am saying so is because, you know, as a creative, you know, I always find myself looking at myself in a way that I can't be fitted in a, in a particular box. So I would just say I'm a change maker. Fantastic. Again, that's, you know, <clears throat> when we read people's profile and we already know, oh, this is what you do as a professional. This is what you do. But sometimes when we ask you, what do you do? We want to hear it from your own perspective to say, you know what? Actually, when I look at every of my expressions, this is what I do, right? Yeah. So I love that you are a change maker. Uh -huh. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Fantastic. <laughs> So whether you are you. being a pharmacy or you're being a dad or you're being a husband, you're trying to mm. effect positive change, right? Yes, Fantastic. yes, yes, yes. Love it. Okay, so what's your philosophy about life? So you were born to make impact. So you should die knowing you have left an impact. I mean, that summarizes it for me. Mm, I you love know. it. I love it. You were made to make impact, so you should die knowing that you've made impact. I love it. That's such like impact driven. Okay. Yeah, yeah my tribe member. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so tell us one fun thing about you. Okay, I love cartoons. I love watching cartoons. I mean, I don't get bored with my children. I I enjoy watching cartoons. Well, let me put this way, safe cartoons, because in the world we live in now. I mean, there are different kinds of cartoons. So child-friendly cartoons that you can leave your toddler with, you know, and you're sure they're not being indoctrinated in a negative way. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very yes. important. So let me, let me put it that way. Yes. Yeah, very important that you pointed that out. Fantastic. Okay, now we know a little bit about you. We know you love cartoon. Um, you're a change maker, you know, and your philosophy about life is about making impact. Now it makes sense, even with your profile that we've read, like you're always training people, you're looking for solutions. Now, let us get into the story of how you came about knowing or discovering, you know, um, why did you focus on allergies specifically? What happened that made you focus in that area? Okay, well, I mean, this is the story of my life. Let me just put it in a bracket. It's the story of my life. So, you know, I grew up in a home that my mom, you know, she, she schooled abroad. So she's very vast in diets, in food, basically. So growing up, you know, I mean, she having her formative years abroad, she was very exposed to different kind of cuisines or foods. And unfortunately, or would I say fortunately, when she gave birth to me, I mean, of course, when I needed to be weaned off breast milk, they needed to introduce formulas to my diet. They now discovered along the line that whenever I take dairy-based formulas, I, it triggers some unwanted side effects, which were more to do with my skin. So anytime I take anything that has dairy in it, especially formulas, I break out in terrible skin reactions. And unfortunately for them, you know, they didn't know which solutions they could profess, even though my dad was actually a pharmacist, you know. So, yes, my dad's actually a pharmacist. So they had to start looking at how to source for what they would place me on in terms of formula from abroad, because there was nothing um, formulated or produced in Nigeria. So, I mean, gradually I was... I wind off that. I got, I mean, I believe I got cured. You know, I'm a faith person. So I got cured from that. So, but I still had my desire to um, look at how I can cater to that, that, that community. Because as I grew up, you know, I discovered that I loved food. You know, I desire, I loved, I mean, that's one part of me. I love food and I'm very, you know, interested in how food turns out, you know, and, you know, food is very, very diverse. So I was asking myself that, okay, which part, which aspect of food production do I really love? And I discovered that it was more to do with confectionaries. I have a sweet tooth, first of all. So I said, okay, I wanted to discover how to make 
cakes, cookies. So I didn't really start it as a business. It was more of, okay, how do they make, because, you know, uh, when I was growing up, when my mom travels, she brings back all these cakes, all these um, Swiss rolls, cookies. And when I compare them to the ones made in Nigeria, I'm like, you, <laughs> you they are so, the, the quality is top notch. So I, I was interested in how were they able to make such delectable treats. I mean, how were they able to make them? Of course, we, we started getting exposed to the kind of um, ingredients they use because, you know, we have expert traits in Nigeria. So when I go to the stores, I see the kind of um, ingredients they use. I see the kind of butter they use. I see the kind of ingredients. I just, and of course, with the invent of um, internet and with the rising of blogs, you know, most of the bloggers, especially food bloggers, they would state the brands they use. And I mean, with the rise of importation of all these things into Nigeria, I started discovering all this. So I started incorporating it into my cooking and I started that, okay, so that I can actually make such. And from there, I started giving friends and they were like, okay, this is very nice. They would like to have a taste. And so along, that's how my big, I'm just trying to give you a back history of how I started baking. Then around 2000 and um, I think 16, yes, I, uh, okay, let me just say this story. So after I finished service here, I worked with someone in community practice and she was basically, her, her own line of treatments was based on holistic treatments. So it, it means that she's just not curing your disease, but she's curing the whole body. Right. So if you come to the pharmacy, she will not just say, okay, you have a headache. Okay, let's give you paracetamol. Or you have an infection. Let's give you an antibiotic. She would want to go to the genesis. Now, why did you, of all the issues, why was it this you came down with? There's something wrong with your body. There's something missing in your body. Your body, there's a deficiency somewhere. So that got me interested in wellness. That Okay, it's not that. Because she made me understand that these uh, uh, attacks are everywhere. You know, the bacteria are everywhere. I mean, that's True. why when you put your sliced bread on the table after five days, it goes mold because the bacteria has already started working on the bread. It's just right. the time, the conducive environment that makes them grow. When you put your, when you put your bread in your fridge, in fridge. It's, it's not as if the bacteria is not there, but the growth has been stunted because the environment is not conducive. Not conducive. Hmm. Yeah. So I got to know that it's the same thing in our body. If our body is at optimum health, any any foreign organism that enters, it will not be able to grow because the environment is not conducive. Your immune system is on top notch. So that got me interested in, okay, so the aspect, so how can I incorporate this into my baking business? I have clients, you know, we have clients that will come in, they have sugar issues, they are diabetic, they have high cholesterol, but of course they want to go to parties, they want to have cake. Some of them, some of them want to actually just have cake. So I said, okay, let me start branching into a healthier option for people like that. Then, of course, with time, I started coming across people that, you know, they will have skin issues. And then we start tracing, okay, what do you eat? What do you introduce to your diet? And they'll be like, oh, I love bread a lot. And anytime I eat bread, I break out. Oh, I love dairy. I love chocolates. Anytime I eat chocolate, I break out. So we said, okay, can you stay without chocolate? Let us try and see. And we discovered that if they stay without chocolates, if they stay without wheat-based uh, confectionaries for some few days, discover that, okay, that, even without treatment, discover that that issue, maybe the skin issue, the rash, maybe the cough, the eye, the swollen eye, or the, um, the hair uh, pulling out, it starts to reduce. So it got me interested in, okay, so what is actually in this flower that is causing people to have reactions? So, I mean, I went down my research, I started researching, and I got to understand that there is a particular protein in flour. I'm going down the science line now. <laughs> Go for it, you know, so that we can know? have so, con context. Yeah, so I discovered that down, I went, when I discovered my research, unfortunately, this research was based on papers, medical, re medical research papers abroad, because in our country, Nigeria, we don't have much, we don't have any research on allergies food-based allergies let me not mm. say allergy because allergies can be from your your cream, your cream allergies yeah. can be from your clothes it can even mm. be from the water 
from the environment. So I had mm. to, you know, narrow it down to food-based allergies. We don't have any medical research because I don't just want, you know, as a as a science person, everything has to be backed with research. Which based, it has to be yeah, evidence facts. based. Yeah. Yes, mm. you can't just say, oh, uh, Mrs. This in this community, where is the research? So I had to go down to, you know, medical reports, uh, British journalism, British medical um, journalists um, that have done research, especially medical doctors that have done research on uh, food allergies. So from there, I discovered that, okay, there was a row of wheat, and not just wheat, the gluten in wheat, because now your wheat is composed of so many things. Your wheat, and when I say wheat, I mean the flour, is composed of your carbohydrates, it's composed of fiber, and it also has protein in it. Now, the protein content in your wheat is called gluten. Yeah, so they now discover that the gluten sometimes, when some people ingest it, the gluten is like a bad guy. Once it enters into their body, the body doesn't want it. The body sees it as a foreign item. So the body attacks it. So, and the way the body attacks it, 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 it creates a sort of inflammatory response. Just as a way when you ingest something you're not supposed to ingest due to an allergy and you maybe you, your lips will swell. It's actually a response. It's an, it's an inflammatory response. It's an immune mm. response to say, my body doesn't want that. It's you rejecting know. it. Mm. You reject it. So I asked brother, okay, how many people in Nigeria actually know that some of these skin reactions that they always come into the hospital with buying cream. cream. You know, they keep <laughs> buying cream, buying cream, steroidal creams that are not even good for your body. Not knowing that it is what they eat. And if you look at our diet, our diet now is highly is highly, um, how do I put this? It's highly rich in carbohydrates. Your bread, yeah, carbohydrates. Your, <laughs> your, <laughs> paste, your pasta, your noodles. You'll be surprised. Even semo, it's Fufu. actually with bait. <laughs> Fufu, you know? So a lot of people don't even know that that diet has gone a long way in introducing so many things. Then I now discovered another thing because I had to ask myself that, okay, when these things were because they are created in nature. It was not as if we went to the lab to formulate wheat. But what I discovered along the line in my research was that because of, you know, a lot of um, industrialization, they want higher yields, they want faster production, they want resistant, um, um, disease resistant strains of certain kinds of grains. There were some manipulations done in, in, in medicine, in science, let me say, that has altered some of the DNAs of this wheat. So even though the wheat have a higher yield, even though the wheat are resistant to diseases, some of them have actually become more of, um, toxic to the body. So some people, if they eat it, it's not like the natural wheat that was being grown many years ago by our mm. forefathers, you know? A lot of these things have been genetically modified. So they have changed their DNA. So, you know, but unfortunately, because of some other, you know, powerful forces, you know, because, you know, the food chain, people that control the food chain, they are highly placed in the society. And, so, and there's part of the pharmaceuticals they talk about. Yes, the big pharmaceuticals. Yes, mm. The big pharmaceuticals. So they wouldn't want to bring out this research because there's a lot of money in it. And, and that's why that's why a lot of people started going organic. But you know, organic is also in quotes expensive, like people true, say. True. You know, so they've made, you know, and this is how it has gone. The the, the high yielding uh, wheat products are cheaper to produce. You don't need as much resources to produce them. And the the outcome, the higher compared to organic. Now, and I'm not saying this based on fact, but I'm just saying this like, let's just assume that for your wheat, your wheat, your genetically modified wheat, maybe it might take three months to grow. But the organically grown wheat, that one might take one year. For your genetically modified wheat, you might not need as much water. You might not need as much pesticides. You might not need as much resources to store them when you harvest them. They might be free from mold. But for your organic one, you might need a longer period. You might need to store them in, you know, a uniquely formulated um, storage device, which might cost more. So at the end of the day, when it now comes to the end user, the end user will prefer the cheaper one than the more expensive one because he wants to make more profits. But 
I, along the line, I had to tell myself that there are a lot of people that are in the dark concerning this. So I said, okay, let me start to produce this gluten-free. So I started calling them gluten because, I mean, they are basically gluten-free. So we had to start using, looking for alternative because now those that are even allergic to the ones that have been genetically modified, even the regular wheat, the body doesn't accept it anymore. The body already sees it as, a, as an as enemy. A, as so a, whether it's as an it, alien. Hmm. As an alien. Then, fortunately, I won't say unfortunately because, you know, there's always a diamond in the rock. 2017, we now gave birth to my son, who was, I mean, his birth, everything was fine. But when he was now four months, you know, we wanted to now introduce, um, of course, formula into his diet. And then that's when we now discovered that the formula we bought, I mean, he started having skin reactions. He was having blisters. And I mean, I mean, the science, the, the medical background in me just picked it up immediately. Note, like picked something, it up immediately is, because something is something is off. Mm. So we, we checked, we checked the packaging and we discovered that, okay, there's wheat in it. And I'm like, okay, wheat, are these signs of wheat allergy? Stretch Street Podcast. So guys, this is a, it's quite a long episode. So we're going to have two parts of this, right? So I'll see you next week with part two. Hey, thank you for watching today's episode. I really do hope that you found it valuable. All right. If you did, please visit us again next week when we will put out another episode. In case you forgot at the beginning or at the middle, <laughs> now is a good time to click on the subscribe button, turn on notifications so that you don't get to miss any of our episodes. All right. Till we come your way again next week. Remember also to read the description of this video for any links that might be there that would help you or also help you support the work that we do here, all right? I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.